subset of those calls, we have people that need to get extricated. And we have extrication equipment on all of our rigs, but our uh, trucks and heavy rescue have more. And that's what we're going to demonstrate now. This is one of our trucks, aerials, we call them ladder 12. They're a ladder unit that does not have a bucket on the end, and that's how I designated a ladder versus a tower that has the uh, 
big bucket on the end where two or three people can uh, do work from. But these guys don't let that hold, hold them back. They get everything done without that bucket. All right, so when we go on a, a scene of an extrication, um, the first person on scene, the first officer, which would be Lieutenant uh, Justin Sinek, he's going to be in command. He's got a lot on his plate. They call it the hardest job in the fire service. And the reason is, is they have to think, communicate, and do things with their hands simultaneously. So he's telling me what to do as a crime chief as I'm coming in behind him about what he's going to need for me and what's going on in the scene and the resources we're going to need. If we have more patients than a typical one patient call, we might be having to get five patients, we're going to have ten. So he's trying to assess those things. He's also going to be assessing, and he's not going to walk around yet, I'm going to let him do that here in a minute, and then we're going to run the scene. But he's going to be deciding how many patients we have, whether we have a risk of fire. In any of our extrications, we always have a risk of fire. There could be a ruptured fuel tank, um, these days with electric vehicles, and, and coming up hydrogen vehicles, there's all kinds of explosive risks and fire risks. So he'll be assessing whether that's immediate or something that someone can do later, pulling on a line for uh, potential fire control. He's also deciding on stability of uh, the uh, cars and how they're going to initially uh, try to extricate victims from those cars. So those are all things that he has to do, communicate while walking around, looking and deciding. So his first few minutes are very difficult. His crew is going to be pre-thinking uh, him and they need, they need to bring out uh, equipment, uh, uh, making the scene safe by blocking traffic, calling for law enforcement to assist, a little bit of control, all those things. So the first five minutes, they look pretty hectic. And with that, we're going to be moving at about 70% speed today. There's no reason for my firefighters to trip over anything, anybody can get hurt. So normally we're going to do this a little bit faster, especially when there is a, a life a life threat, like a victim in the car. And today we are going to have a victim in the car. I think she's already ready. She's one of our paramedic students. There she is, giving her a thumbs up. So we got, oh, we got a thumbs up from her. And I'm going to give this to Sid to start his movement. And I'll just uh, narrate, and we're going to watch what happens. Sound good? Woo! All right. Might as well take it away, just uh, roll it in and I'll talk. So, here he goes, he's running around. His crew typically uh, is going to be pulling out equipment that they potentially they can use. They're going to be uh, uh, setting it down if they don't use it, but if it's in their hand now, the compartment is just that much faster. He's already assessed what he needs to do. He's got a victim in the red car. Um, we're going to think that there's a victim in the other one too, but we don't have a real person in there right now. So they're going to be focusing on uh, uh, medical assessment. So we also have medic 12 here today. One of their members is going to be assigned to the patient. They're going to be going inside with the patient through a better assessment.
How much do those weigh? 45? 50. 50 pounds. I don't know if I could do that right now. I'm not going to lie. The advantage of these is they don't have cords on them, right? So we don't have some cord hanging behind them where they're going to trip. Um, they're still hydraulic. They're just electric. That pushes hydraulic. cover our patient with a blanket for that glass. Uh, sometimes we'll use rotary saws, electric saws, uh, sawzalls to also uh, work on the extrication. So the blankets are uh, protected for them. She's going to be uh, crawling into the vehicle now to make that patient contact. Uh, it typically seems she might even be in there a bit earlier, but just for the demonstration, we're going to get her in there now. And we'll be assessing the normal ABC, airway breathing, circulation, level of consciousness. Uh, often the patient's in is uh, one of the most challenging part of their extrication is getting their feet out because during a front end collision, often feet slide under the pedals and hit hand in the, in the pedal mechanism. So many of our extrications are taken several hours with the last hour of it being just trying to get in to be able to get to their feet so that we can uh, make sure their feet are not uh, any more injured. Now, 
Um, the spinal precautions are something that we decide upon when we go when we have these patients. We have certain protocols for deciding whether we need to just follow them, which is the follow you see around their neck, uh, and whether we put them on a back door. And in this case, we'll often take people out on the back door, even if they're not sure, because it's just like a really soon way to bring them out to further assess it. Because uh, he probably wasn't able to see that patient's back. And we'll be able to do that as we just lay them down as we have to do a quick and we'll have to time. Go ahead, Rob. Chris, I'm going to shoot. I'm going to talk to you guys about all the, uh, the metrics we use to try to decide, are we really good with the fire department or are we so-so, right? And one of, the time, one of the things we decide on is time to extrication. So at this point, Justin, we keep getting on the radio and telling the dispatch for the time stamp uh, patient is extricated. So that's one of the things we look at to see how efficient are we? Are we doing a good job? Otherwise, we're not, we're not sure, right? we got to quantify it. Awesome. Great job, guys. Is that a B-post way out there, Lieutenant? B-post lay down. B-post lay down. That's why it looks a little different than the, the uh, blowout. So that's a B-post lay down. Um, let me see if these guys are going to do anything else here today, or we're going to be uh, ending there.
you guys have probably noticed that our windshields are made of different kinds of, of glass than our side windows. They have multiple layers of laminated glass. Totally beneath this you, know, you, you can't hit that with a center punch or an axe and just shatter and have it go to the ground. They have to be chopped out either with an axe or uh, the housing that he's using there or sawdall, something like that. Yeah, so as you see here, this uh, depot, his width is wider than the other one. So it's through multiple cuts, and then getting through the middle is always uh, a challenge. So it looks like these guys are going to get it. We'll see if they're going to pitch down low to get a pivot point or not, and then we'll be able to uh, plop this thing down and get our pacing towel. Awesome. Here are the years of uh, 